G'day everyone and welcome back to another Audiovisual Distributors Tech Insight. My name is Justin. Today we're going to touch base on a product from AV Pro Edge. Now, if you don't know who AV Pro Edge are, these guys manufacture a whole stack of video distribution products from your 18 gig HDMI over HD base T and fiber optic HDMI cables from Bullet Train. They even have a card frame type matrix system as well, but they've taken it another step further. Now, AV Pro Edge have now brought out a video distribution over IP system. Now this one is called the MXNet system, which is a 4K video distribution platform over IP. Now it is extremely scalable, it's extremely flexible, and the best part about it is you don't need to be a rocket scientist to be able to program or configure it. Now AV Pro Edge have really taken all the guesswork out and created a plug and play essentially configurable video distribution over IP system. Now the MXNet system, we're going to touch base on a few different bits and pieces that obviously create the whole MXNet solution. I guess the first part really for us to start off with is the MXNet control box, which houses the MXNet Mentor software, which gives you the web UI to be able to configure the system and obviously utilize it in operation. So let's take a closer look at the MXNet control box. Okay, now the image that you're seeing here in front of you right now is the MXNet control box itself. Now, the hardware itself is the same size as the encoders and decoders, uh, but what it does is gives us quite a bit of flexibility for the video over IP system. Now, let's take a quick look at the front of this particular control box. Now, you notice here it says MXNet on the left-hand side with the MXNet C box, standing for control box. There is two little OLED displays on here, which is going to give us all of the integral information we need in relation to the control box IP address, the IP over the network, and everything else that is needed. And by press the, to scroll page buttons, will obviously run us through those particular details on those OLED displays. Now to the right of that is a DHCP button. By pressing and holding this, it will give you a DHCP address, obviously, from that network for you to obviously connect to. Now, this system is extremely flexible. It's very easy to configure, and you will find that by connecting this up to your existing IP network, which I'll show you the port involved on the back of this, you can quite simply connect to this via your wireless network or by your IP network to configure the system further. So let's take a quick look at the back of the MXNet control box. Now you'll see from the left hand side port 1 which is the Mentor Land control port. Now this will be connected to your existing network so you can connect to the MXNet Mentor software via your existing wireless network. And on the far right hand side you'll see an Ethernet port there saying MXNet PoE AV network. That will plug directly to your network switch. Now while we're touching on network switches, AV Pro Edge have done all the hard work in relation to their network switches for you. They're pre-configured, they're VLAN, everything is set up for jumbo frame and everything else you need for a JPEG 2000 4K system. And uh, quite simply, you can just plug it all in, POE to every endpoint, and the system will work for you straight away. Then you can go into the configuration steps in relation to naming encoders and decoders and matrixing and all that jazz. We'll touch base on that further. We've actually created a more in-depth video on the MXNet Mentor software, so I highly recommend check out our channel for that. Now, let's just jump back into what we were talking about on the back of this MXNet control box. Now, you'll notice there from port 2 to 7, uh, obviously Ethernet ports there, so if you need a few extra ports on your data network, you can utilize there if you choose to. So that's essentially it across the board for the MXNet control box. Now the MXNet control box gives us complete flexibility of configuring the system and we'll go through that in a little bit of detail just now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is run through quickly the MXNet Mentor software, which is located on the MXNet control box that we've just gone over. Now, when you've logged in via the IP address um, and you come up with the web UI of the MXNet Mentor software, this is what you'll be greeted with. So we, this is going to be a very quick run through. We do have a more detailed video uh, also about the MXNet on our YouTube channel, so I highly recommend have a look at that for more detail. 
But straight off the bat, let's have a look here. We've got our home system utilities. Now, this is essentially the home page of the MX Net Mental software, where you'll notice where the IP addresses, MAC addresses, and all the specifics on the system are located in this location. Now, uh, we go through this in a bit more detail in another video, but we can also upload uh, firmwares and everything for encoders and multiple decoders and everything from this location as well. So this is kind of your go-to page, and the information you're seeing on here will be on the OLED displays on the MXNet control box. The next tile here is in relation to your encoders and decoders. Now, as we mentioned, encoders are inputs and, and decoders are outputs, and this is where we can go through those at a glance, just quite simply by selecting the tile. These are our input devices, which if we need to change those in detail, we can highlight this and name them like I have here with Foxtel and DVD. Uh, we go through this in more detail in another video. Outputs, much the same. Um, and then you'll notice here there's all the resolutions, MAC addresses, and all this information also available here and if you do need to check out a few details there is a diagnostics page which we go through in a little more detail on our other video. Now the next tile here is in relation to the auto matrixing of the system so this is video and audio done at a single click so if we go Foxtel and um, we might want to well, let's go DVD in this case and we want to push that to these two locations so the lounge here and this other decoder which is unnamed at this moment in time this is MAC address also has the DVD image there as well you'll notice that there's also a preview of the encoded import sources here which is refreshed every few seconds or so so you can check that by just looking at the web UI if you do have input source which is also very handy. Now the next tile we have here is video wall. This is more commercial applications so this is where we can create video walls. You can select the amount of displays you wish on those video walls from this location and once you've done that then you can obviously set up those video walls if need be. Uh, then we go into a new feature set which is the mosaic video wall which is those scattered video walls that a lot of people like to do for sort of decorative design also can be done in this location. Now the next tile that we see here is our central command. So this is uh, where CEC, RS-232, IP, IR control is all done uh, by simply selecting what you choose to utilize and put in the appropriate details uh, for that control platform. And you'll be able to do that from the central command icon here. Now independent routing is a little bit different to your standard auto matrixing where we have our variety of encoders. Now this is obviously distributing just the video portion. So we can select that video portion to go to the lounge area. If we went to the audio segment, we could then select the Foxtel audio to go to the lounge area while we might be running a different video source. So there is a fair bit of functionality there for your more customized approaches. Now the IR pass and IRI is your IR routing. Now this is all available from here as well, so it's very simple to negotiate your way through that. Now the USB KVM side is where you may want to control a PC in the rack and we can quite simply do that by obviously keyboard and mouse extensions. So in relation to the lounge room we might have a keyboard and mouse there uh, but let's say in this Foxtel host location could be a PC. We can control that via using this USB capability. Uh, so you can really customize your systems accordingly. Now KVM roaming is more commercial aspect, so we can create groups, so admin groups for KVM, uh, which is a nice feature for more commercial installations. And then the custom images page, which you can load up your appropriate uh, company logos or details. So when the system boots up, or if you might not have signal, it can say, please check details, whatever you choose to do. And we can force these images from this page as well. So at a glance, this is us going through the MXNet Mentor software. We do have a more detailed video on our YouTube channel, so definitely check that out. Uh, but this is a quick overview on what the MXNet Mentor software can do and how we negotiate through it. So let's get back to more of the hardware now in relation to the MXNet system video distribution platform. So there you have it. There's a bit of detail about the control box. As you can see, it's very flexible, very simple to configure, and it's quite easy to find your way around that. But definitely check out our other video on more detail about the, uh, the mental software on the MXNet control box. All right, so what you're seeing here now is the MXNet uh, encoder, the one gig encoder. Now, there is a couple of encoders available in the MXNet software. The one we're looking at here is the standard encoder. They also create one that has full Dolby downmixing as well for you. So anything that comes into that encoder can be downmixed to two-channel PCM and obviously routed accordingly via the MXNet software. All those features start to come online once you plug these significant devices in. Now, but let's, let's go over this particular encoder with a little bit of detail. 
So the encoder is, yes, the transmitting IP device on the network. It's the import device, and that is what you've probably just seen in relation to the MXNet software. But from the front of this, you'll notice here there is a power and link status lighting. So that's obviously the unit is getting power from the PoE switch. Uh, if you do require extra power, like if you don't have a PoE switch, you can utilize 12 volt power supplies on these devices and they are a separate SKU. They don't come with the units. But essentially we've got power and we have a link status, which meaning the system is up and running. Now you do have an EDID copy from the loop output. So if you had the loop output and you want to copy a particular EDID to the system, you can quite simply do so by pressing that. You have the RS-232, and then we have the IR in, which is the IR pass and IRI, and then the IR output. Now you'll also see here on the front of this particular encoder is the OLED display as well, very similar to the control box. Now this here is going to give you all the significant information you need in relation to the MAC address of the device and whatever it is you might choose to name it in the naming convention in the MXNet mentor software. Uh, and it gives you everything at a glance that you will need to utilize and configure in the system. Now, to the right of that, you'll see a series of dip switches. Now, underneath this particular device, I'll see if I can get a quick snapshot up here for you in relation to that. And what it is is a bunch of different jumper settings here, so you can actually force particular EDIDs on the actual encoder if you need to. Now, the best thing about the MXNet system, it has scaling all built in, so on the output side of things, we can scale the system to suit any particular display you might have on the network. Then to the right of that, you'll see the FPGA chipset and MCU ISP buttons. Well, you will obviously not utilize these and the USB therefore configuring in relation to firmware. But if it's all on the network, we will do it all that way. And that's all done and detailed in the MXNet Mentor software video that we created. So there's a fair bit of stuff going on on the front of this. Now, when we look at the back of the particular unit, you should see the image of that now. You see the one gigabit network port here, which is essentially plugged into your network switch. Uh, and that's how we get this encoded source, which is plugged into either this, this HDMI import here into the network. But you'll also notice here there's an SFP slot here. So we can utilize fiber optics in relation to these encoders and decoders as well. So if you have a bit of a lengthy run that you need to run some fiber to to get out to a garage or a different perimeter in the building or something like that, you can use the fiber optics site by installing your SFP of choice there. So the HDMI input, you also have a loop output, which is very handy in the integration world for testing, etc. And then you'll see your balanced audio audio input and your USB host and yes that power supply and beside that to the left of that is a little reset button if you need to reset the device manually. So that is essentially the encoder. Uh, the encoder itself has a lot of features as you can see especially when you're dealing on the front where you've got the RS-232 and all that as well. Uh, it can You can route the RS-232 as well from encoder to decoders etc including IR and the rest of the audio and that as well. So very flexible system. So the other encoder, as I mentioned, that has all the PCM down mixing. So obviously down mixing Dolby, <coughs> Dolby Audio and Atmos and all that down to two channel PCM can be done. So if you require that, you can add one of those into your network and deal with that cinema and basically down mixing that audio and sending it through to the rest of the house if you choose to. So that essentially is the AC MXNet one gig encoder. All right. Now let's have a look at the MXNet decoder. Now the decoder looks just like the encoder, same scale, same size, all PoE. But what we're going to do is put up an image of the device here and let's go through it in a bit of detail. Okay, so just looking at the front of the MXNet decoder. Now this is the receiving IP device, so this will be plugged into your display uh, on and obviously utilizing the PoE outputs of your network switch to do so. Again, very similar to what we have on the encoder. We have your power and link. Uh, you have your EDID uh, copy as well if you choose to from the HDMI output, your RS-232, all your IR, as well as that little OLED display there telling us what the MAC address is and the name of the device. So this could be marked a bedroom display, cinema display, whatever it might be. When you call that in the naming convention of the mental software, you'll see that located on there. You'll see two USB ports. Now you'll notice here that it says USB HID uh, LS, obviously being for the lower bandwidth side and higher spec in relation to the HS in USB data. Now take into consideration, these are designed for your KVM type extensions. You know, um, if you want to be dealing with camera solutions and things like that on these particular 
a USB port. So um, I probably would more or less deter from that and just utilizing this to dealing with your keyboard and mouse extensions to obviously control media systems and things like that if you choose to. And we have the FPGA chipset switches and things which you wouldn't use in your case. Now, let's flip the unit around and have a look at the back of the unit. You'll see here you've got your one gigabit network, which is all PoE, so they power from the network switch. Now, if you are to use the fiber optic side, like we spoke about with the encoder, put your SFP of choice in there with your LC connectors over your fiber optics. Now, just remember, like anything, if we're dealing with fiber optics, it doesn't carry voltage, so you will need to purchase a 12 volt power supply for that. You have your HDMI output and your analog audio output and your reset switch here as well. So <clears throat> your decoder is very much self-explanatory there's not a lot of change or difference there that you need reasonably compact in design just like the encoder and it can fit behind any of your displays now with these particular units they all have lights on them and displays on them you know with the power and the link like and the and the monitor as we'll just go back to the front of the unit again you'll see here with that the ip monitor there which is that little oled display now in the mxnet software you can turn off all the lights in these in the bedroom because you don't want probably lights and that flashing behind the display we we'll go into that a little bit of detail in our other video so check out the mxnet mentor software for the mxnet control box uh, goes through a little bit more functionality on how that all happens but this is your decoder for the MXNet 4K video distribution system over IP. All right, so we've gone through a fair bit of detail there on the encoders and decoders. Now, there is one encoder we haven't mentioned. AV Pro Edge also have a wall plate encoder, which has all the similar functionality that you've seen on the standard encoders, uh, all based into a dual gang wall plate. It looks a little bit like this. You notice here you've got your HDMI, you've got your USB, you've got everything you need across the board, uh, just like the standard encoder, but it fits in a wall plate. So you can really see the functionality of the MXNet system. It can be utilized in many different projects, from your residential and high-end residential to your education, K-12, or even university sectors, but also into the world of your commercial corporate AV spaces. So the MXNet solution can really work in every single scope. All right, so there you have it. We've gone over quite a bit of detail in relation to the encoders and decoders and the control box and even network switches that are all available from AV Pro Edge for the MXNet 4K over IP system. Now the MXNet system can deal with a variety of resolutions. So I mentioned it is a 4K, 444 at 30. If you need to do 4K at 60, it'll be at 420. Uh, it is a JPEG 2000 system. It's very powerful. It is configurable. As I mentioned earlier in this video, you don't have to be a rocket scientist in, in the world of IT to configure this and make that happen. Especially if you use all of the MXNet solution, including their network switches, everything is done for you essentially. Uh, check out the video that we've made in relation to the MXNet Mentor software. It's a bit more of a guided run through on all those functions and features within that software. Uh, it's something that uh, I suggest you, you have a good look at because it really does simplify the process on understanding the MXNet system. If you need to know more about this solution, please have a look at our AV Distributors website. The details are below. We have a bunch of information there for you that you can download in relation to specs and detailed information about the individual components of the MXNet system. If you want to speak to us about it, we'll reach out to sales at AV Distributors. Have a chat to your BDMs around the country or the sales team. They'll be able to run you through pricing and details and assist you in building your own MXNet IP solution for your future projects. And I guess I'm going to sign off from here. Thank you so much for taking the time and listening to me here at our AV Distributors Tech Insight on the AV Pro Edge MXNet system. We really do appreciate your time. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to seeing you in our next AV Distributors Tech Insight.